it's quite important for me to not take campaigns or work with clients that I feel like don't align with me. We're a generation that wants to be so busy, always want to be seen, always want to be out there. But there are times where, you know, when you are going through those blocks, you need to be alone. Like you really need to be alone and you need to come back to self. We're so, so fixated on um, the digital landscape. We love it, we work in it, but that is not reality. The true reality, right? It is a right. part of our lives. It is a percentage of what people know. Find what your source of, of, of light is because you're gonna need it. Um, oh, yeah. We're not constantly going, we're not constantly on. When I'm in my good high, yeah. I shoot. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm shooting, I'm creating, so that when I am in that dip and in that creative block, I still have something to put out there. Being able to sell concept and actually bring that concept to life, two different things. What up, Buffet 2? Hi, I'm John Baloy. Hi, this is Samanix. Hi guys, this is Toby. We are listening to B-Roll. 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 With Cyril Zuma. Welcome to Bureau Conversations, where we uncover stories of inspiring individuals who are making waves in the creative space. I am your host, of course, Cyril Zuma, for those who don't know, Umshuti Wabashuti, and a whole bunch of other AKAs, of course. On today's episode, we actually have a trailblazing travel entrepreneur, or travelpreneur, I want to say that, <laughs> a lifestyle content creator um, who really, with her content, takes us to new horizons every single time. I'm on her Instagram, I'm on her YouTube, I am on her Twitter, I see a whole different thing. Some of you might know her, but please extend a warm welcome and invitation to Toby Rose. Welcome, Toby. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to be back. Is it? You know, speaking to you again. Yeah, we last spoke in 2020, right? We did. Yeah. Was that just before lockdown? It was in February. Yeah. Yeah. I, the date, I think it's yeah. the 8th of February. That was the yeah. first conversation. Yes. Oh, really, it's really interesting. Two years, three years. Oh, yeah. What is it? Two years, three. I want to argue. Three years, three years. Yeah, three years, three years. Just to kick it off, right? Um, could you introduce yourself and just share a bit, a, bit, a bit about your travel journey and just your influencer journey too? Awesome. Hi, everyone. So I'm Toby Tobega. Um, I do like just telling people that my real name, full name is Tobega. Um, I was born into a family that really loves traveling. I think my father instilled in all of us the love for our country, um, the love for road trips, the love for seeing um, nature. Yeah. And so for me, being young, I can still look back at like very pivotal moments um, traveling that I felt like were amazing. You can know? you share some of the moments? Yeah, with definitely. Um, so first time in Cape Town, I think I was about five years old. That's I, a new world, by the way. I know, because I actually <laughs> felt like I wasn't in South Africa. Funny okay. enough, I look at the photos and I'm like, oh, this was Cape Town. You know? <laughs> um, and we were wearing these big jackets. It was winter. Um, and I just remember being at the aquarium, you know, holding onto the fish, oh, that nice. um, not late nights doing our hair at night and just that sort of, um, experience. I remember my first time at the Kruger National Park with my family. Um, and at the time, my uncle, who's my dad's youngest brother, um, was really into documenting. And so he had a video camera. He would go around to all the kids, ask us all what we've seen and, I was always bubbly, outspoken. Yeah. And he came to me and he said, Tobago and Bonan, what did you see? <laughs> and I was like, you you know, like, yeah. Ge you know, and just being who I really am right now. And it's, it's crazy remembering those things and knowing them and then realizing you're living them, right? For like, sure. Right now in the present. Yeah. Um, but I didn't just start doing travel content. It was just always in me. I worked in television and radio. I was in media. You worked at time. MTV, right? I worked at V Entertainment. V Entertainment, okay. V Entertainment. <laughs> so okay. I worked uh, before that at YFM. Um, doing entertainment news, totally different from what I'm doing now. Like reporting, reporting news. Literally, I was on like going to events, interviewing all the coolest people, oh. um, editing that, getting in studio and, and having that on air every day, Monday to Friday. Sure. I did that for two years and then kind of got poached by V, v Entertainment. Yeah. Juggled the both for a year and then decided to go television. I think I was drawn in by how content is actually made and how content then lands sure. on our screens, um, which then 
brought me to where I am now, where I'm creating my own content. And I guess I am now um, my own little, you know, entity that creates content, but for digital. So it's crazy, eh? That yeah. That things can just move. It's quite a long <laughs> journey that you've gone through. You've got, done quite a lot and now you're actually here. I want to ask this, right, for anybody that says, I'm also good at content. Yeah. I've got a few things here. What was the turning point for you when you said, I want to make a living off this? When I was working, actually, even at Y or at the entertainment, I was still working with brands. Um, I've worked with brands basically my whole life. Okay. In varsity, I was a cool kid on campus. Um, I was with Blackberry. Blackberry. Everybody knew me. <laughs> Don't act like you didn't know me. Blackberry. <laughs> Blackberry. Oh, you were Blackberry promoting ambassador. Blackberry. Yeah, I was oh, one dope. of the ambassadors. Oh, wow. It was a huge campaign across the country. Where was this, by the way? Um, at UJ. At UJ, okay. And um, they had it across different varsities around South Africa. Okay. And I was put, picked out of the whole... I guess UJ yeah. to become one of the ambassadors uh, oh, wow. for Blackberry. So that was amazing. I was cool before cool was even a cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> before cool. Yeah, yeah before this whole like influencer vibe. In, in fact, I think the, the one of the coolest ways to be was to be at varsities and actually yeah. traveling. And one of them also was being uh, the Red Bull girl. Exactly. Or I Red also wanted to be one, right? But yeah. like, I felt like Blackberry was great. And okay. then I worked with an alcohol brand and I also did that and we would host house parties yeah. um, and take alcohol to the house parties Dope. um so i've always worked with brands for me it's never been a new thing yeah um luckily for me i've never been scared to talk and stand out there and kind of just like be seen yeah. um and so it was easy for me to then move from varsity i did a bit of online writing for a magazine at the time called ice cream magazine ice cream magazine which was owned by ayanda ayanda yeah Zanya. i know yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um. i worked with her um same thing writing for her online uh, platform, wow. going to the coolest events in Joburg, being the coolest chick. <laughs> That's so interesting, right? Because yeah. I know the magazine so yeah. well. I'm like, wow, you actually worked on it yes, too. Yeah. And you did those, you have those skills in your pocket. Absolutely. That's yeah. amazing. So I did that. And then I realized that I've always loved to travel. Took my first trip and I got paid at the entertainment, which was like triple what I got at Y. And I was like, ooh, money. <laughs> Where did <laughs> you go? I went to Bali. Oh, wow. And I went to okay. Bali. Like, so that was your own first yes, official like trip official solo? official trip with a camera, with my sister, where we decided, let's document this yeah. and let's show people other things, right? There was no one really doing it when we started. Um, there was a few faves that we still love. Lelo was was obviously still doing it, but more on the writing side, which sure, had the yeah. blog. Um, but no, not really documenting black woman travel. Sure, you yeah, know? yeah. And so I was like, I see a gap. And then I also was like, right, no one's doing it with a little bit of the lifestyle element. Um, and that's where I kind of filled that gap and started doing what I'm doing now. How long ago was this? This was five years ago, like when I five took the plunge ago. because a friend of mine's son just turned five. And I think one of my last interviews was with um, an influencer called Yoles. Yes. She's a natural hair um, influencer. Yeah. And she was actually pregnant at the time. So that's how I count. So I'm like, yeah, four or five years doing this full time. <laughs> hey, shout out to yours. <laughs> <laughs> if that's out how to you She's your friend, right? I think yeah, I've also seen yeah, her Yeah, yeah, industry friend. friend yeah. I know her. We've met. Um, she actually helped me when I was starting to do this full time. Yeah. Um, we would have coffees and just chat and see like, so how do you guys actually do this full time? For and sure, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a journey when you look back. Yeah. So let, let us draw back a little, right? So you went on your first trip to Bali and you said, I want to document this. And yeah. what, firstly, how much did it cost you? And it doesn't have to be exact figures, right? I mean, okay. I'm sure that in it's about five years ago, some amounts might have changed. How much was it? And what did you do with the content afterwards? What made you, what did you do with it firstly, actually? Awesome. So we sent it bought a camera, my sister, who we started traveling together a lot. Yeah. And uh, we decided we wanted to start a YouTube channel. So we started the channel um, okay. and that was one of the videos that we had put out. Actually, one of the first videos that we had ever put out. I edited it um, <laughs> with very minimal editing skills that I'd taken away from television, obviously. For sure, yeah. Um, having been a um, content producer. You know the you intros, sit and edit. you know yeah. the, exactly So you leads. sit and you're watching the editor do her thing. And I then was like, I'm going to edit. I'm editing all the videos. Oh, and wow. that's where I started, you know, documenting and editing. Yeah. Um, the trip in itself didn't cost too much, if I'm mistaken, over 15,000 rand. Okay. Um, Bali is actually quite a 
cheaper country you can actually go to because you don't need a visa and it's also you know the rand is way stronger so okay, yeah. it was really really like so worth it did you know this though at the time i didn't okay <laughs> we no. were just like yeah, pan. Yeah, like, like we're just like let's go i think we also planned this trip in like two weeks okay um it was so rushed and i think because at the time i'd been used to getting paid peanuts yeah um and then when i landed yeah, like, one go. of my dream jobs which was working at the entertainment um getting paid what i got at the time for me felt like a lot and i was like let's do this you know sure. the time is now like let's do it really really <laughs> interesting i mean you took a plunge um and look at you now you're really successful yeah. and one of the things you know the reason why i have bureau conversations i think i told you the first time we had this conversation on our first podcast yeah. was to celebrate you you yeah. were already doing amazing work at that time and you already even doing much more amazing work i think we've seen you more publicly we've seen you everywhere basically yeah. i don't think there's anything that toby hasn't done whether it's a car brand whether it's traveling to another whatever it is toby has done it trust yeah. me she's dived off a cliff somewhere she's swam Probably. with dolphins or something <laughs> 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 you've done it all right and when you look back at your career yeah. uh, when you started and taking that first video and looking at now what kind of growth do you think um you've amassed Sure, um, quite a lot. Like, I, I, I'm a great editor. I'm a great writer. I've just honed in more to the skills that I have forgotten about, you know. And I think a lot of the time people really do put us in a box. The yeah. moment you say you're an influencer or a content creator, it's like, oh, yeah, you take a photo and That's you post all. it. Yeah. But there's just so much work that goes into it that people don't see, whether it's scouting um, venues, whether it's writing, which means you're actually a copywriter, yeah. um, editing, outfits, um, coming up with the concept, script writing. Um, all of those things are things you learn along the way. Sure. Um, and having seen my growth from then to now, um, I can actually say like I'm great at a lot of the things I do. Yeah. Um, and I'm great at conceptualizing and strategizing. Um, and those are things that are really important right now. Being able to sell concept and actually bring that concept to life, two different things, you know, and I think I'm doing really well at that. <laughs> That's those are very strong points, right? I mean, you know, like again, we've, I've been seeing you almost everywhere, yeah. and that's really, really um, amazing. That as a testament to your growth mm. from radio interviews. I was recently, I was listening to some two of your radio interviews where you're just talking about yourself and people asking you different questions, which is really, really interesting. I really love it. Now that you're successful, right? Most artists like, go through a creative block yeah. to some degree. Yeah. How do you overcome creative blocks? Yo, I have so many, hey? like I go through seasons and I think that's the hard thing about our industry. People don't see how like draining it is. We are supposed to be on. You are constantly on. You are constantly having to churn out content. Um, but the only way I bring myself back is by stillness. Um, I find solace in the stillness and just riding out that wave. Um, another thing that really helps is really just batch content. So like when I'm in my good high, yeah. I shoot. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm shooting, I'm creating. So that when I am in that dip and in that creative block, I still have something to put out there um, that people can engage with and actually, you know, have as, as content. So it really is hard. Um, I went through a little bit of a dip recently and it took a while for me to be like, okay, Toby, like, get up, let's do something, um, yeah. let's create. Um, but yeah, you just have to center yourself and actually sit in it. I think we're so um, we're a generation that wants to be so busy, always want to be seen, always want to be out there. But there are times where, you know, when you are going through those blocks, you need to be alone. Like you really need to be alone, and you need to come back to self. That's the only way you're gonna come back. Um, that good music good people around you, a great community, um, and just watching different things that, like, inspire you, you know, finding some creativity and some, like, hunger again through other mediums helps a lot. I really love that. Like, the first thing you said was right out the way, yeah. right? Because, I mean, look, we're in the creative industry and yeah. it's, a, it's a seesaw sometimes. <laughs> it's a seesaw. Yeah, it's, it's up and down. And those that yeah. are surviving that are constantly going up like this really great. And Absolutely. I really love that advice. I mean... What is your take on mental health? Sure, my take is look after it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think we all are, I think it's worse now because we're so overly stimulated, because we are always online, because we are constantly being bombarded. If it's not an advert, it's Toby's video, it's Cyril's podcast. <laughs> 
<laughs> everything. <laughs> it's a lot. All at once, it's right? All at once. Yeah. Um, and then obviously comes in, you know, those like, am I doing better? Am I doing enough? Um, is what am I doing impactful? Um, so it really, really is important um, to go to therapy. I go to therapy um, in doses because I like, yeah, it's in doses. Sure. <laughs> um, but also apart from that is finding things that really bring you peace and, yeah. and really take you away from that reality because that is not reality. I think we we so, so fixated on um, the digital landscape. We love it. We work in it. But that is not reality. The true reality, right. It is a right. part of our lives. It is a percentage of what people know. And most times it is the best parts of us that we want to share. Um, so really being able to know that <laughs> and to stay grounded, I think grounding is super important, whether that's through your spirituality, whether that's through prayer, whether that's through um, whatever it is, find what your source of, of, of light is because you're going to need it. Um, oh, yeah. We're not constantly going. We're not constantly on. We're not constantly making the money. <laughs> yeah. so, and that's so true, It's right? like you, you have to find something deeper to like kind of, believe in and help people with those times, whether it's journaling, praying, um, working out, do things that make you feel better about yourself. Sure. Um, that's the only way. So something outside of what you normally do yes. as a job every single day, go do something else that yeah. maybe scares you, whatever it may be, go travel alone, whatever exactly. it may be. Exactly. I really love that. I mean, you know, we know as artists, mental health is like, or creatives, mental health is a big thing that yeah. we ignore, whether we just go into drugs, we go into overworking mode, yeah. like, let me just work alcohol, and work and work, alcohol. that's a drug. <laughs> yeah, of course. And it's like, there's just so many things that we, yeah. we, we're not doing right. But shout out to you for going to therapy. I'm actually yeah. um, right now in the process of going to therapy myself because I'm like, hmm, this is really interesting. Let me go back to therapy. So I used to go to yeah. therapy. And now let me let me go back. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for that advice. Definitely not easy. I mean, I just came through a, a very dark <laughs> time, time yeah. and I don't think it was dark you know it's just one of those where you feel like I'm not getting recognized I'm not doing this I'm not doing enough um and that like hurt so it like put me in such a slump um but slowly but surely I had to remember why do I do what I do right and I, I kind of had to find the why again and be like don't let the hurdles become the story they're just hurdles <laughs> I love that yeah I really do love that yeah. what is like what story do you want to leave anyway in life yeah generally oh. i mean look sorry to disturb you there you're like a cool aunt you're cool friend. yes you're like you everything like <laughs> through your stories and i'm so able to like get it you know connect with yeah. you that's just my opinion i want to see yeah. but yeah you tell me i think it's 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 really just i don't know this is so cliche but being a good human being yeah is like at lowest no one talks about that like and it's so important um being a really good human being but biggest thing for me with the work that i do is just inspiring someone else and just imparting something different around travel um and someone seeing themselves through me like that's important for me you know sure. someone being able to say i resonate with toby um i get what she's been through and they can at least um have a little bit more of a blueprint um, and see themselves through me. And obviously changing the face of travel is one way that I feel like I'm doing that. Sure. Yeah. You mentioned like somebody seeing themselves through you, yeah. right? Um, could you walk us through perhaps or recall a moment where you felt it was profound, where you shared with one of your followers or somebody on a trip somewhere yeah. and that cemented to say this is... I should be doing this. Yeah, I did an interview this morning, actually. Um, so that's crazy. Uh, um, I did an interview with the Cozy FM. Oh, um, wow. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's, like, that's the biggest radio station, <laughs> right? <is. laughs> so um, wait, they have to play it. I have to play this podcast after the interview. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I had that interview today for Women's Day. Um, she just put, a lady put together a series uh, for Women's Day for Radio 2000 and Ukozi. Um, and the lady is young and amazing, but after our interview, she literally cried like tears. Um, and she was just like, Tobes, you don't understand like the work you do and how important it is and how you helping so many people um, to see themselves through your work. Um, and that interview was really about sort of the same convo we have now, leaving my nine to five at the time and yeah. doing this full time and the struggles that that came with 
Um, so that for me touched me. Like it was just like, oh my god, I'm doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. On the and biggest rate. At least if one person sees it or hears it, I'm happy. For sure. Yeah. Were you speaking in Zulu there, by the way? I did speak a little bit of Zulu. Okay. I had to actually redo like my questions. Yeah. <laughs> so we had like the English ones, and then I had to speak in Zulu for pause. Really interesting. I mean, look, you know, you talk about sustainable travel right yeah. and which we'll definitely get into i have some questions on sustainable traveling and so that's really great that you went on okozi fm where the majority i guess they speak zulu there yes. and some people are not exposed to travel or they think travel is expensive exactly. and you are an advocate of mm-hmm. um sustainable travel but we'll definitely get into that one <laughs> i want to get into a little bit of your personal life right so Whoa. you're a little bit open openly public about your personal life whether yeah. it's relationships whether it's family um, how do you navigate maintaining a genuine presence online and also just protecting your peace, right? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> There's no answer. Yeah. I think um, I, I fight that within myself on the daily. Like, am I oversharing? <laughs> right, I'm just sharing. Um, but also, I have to remember there's an actual human behind my page. Um, as much as people follow me for the travel, sadly, you're also following Tobega, you True. know, and you're following me. And I think that's that sort of something that does um, make me different from other people. True. Is that I'm not scared to open up a little bit. I'm not scared to, you know, share a little bit about my family, share a little bit about, you know, my breakups yeah. or whatever the hell's happening in my life at yeah. the time. Um, but I assure you, I will not be sharing partners. <laughs> No more. Moving forward. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm lying. I don't know. You don't but, know. I mean, I, I, I just think there's there's no real right answer. For sure. Um, we do what feels good to us at the time. Um, whether it backfires or not, we never know. Um, and I think, you know, you're one that's like, whenever I see you, whenever we meet up, you're openly loving. You're openly yeah. that kind of person. So I can already see the type of person you are. There's no need. I don't know. Call it hiding. Some yeah. people can call it hiding, but there's no need for that. Look, I mean, we've seen your personal life quite differently. Yeah. I think you were training not so long ago, which I don't even want to yeah, go yeah, into. Yeah, a few anyway. months ago, I think. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, how do you handle your personal needs? So we could talk in client now. Client mm-hmm. gives you a brief and you have your own personal needs. I want to do this thing this way. And client says, I want to do it this way. How do you merge the two together to meet the expectations? Sure, I think it starts in the beginning when you send me a brief or you really like wanting to figure out can I have your rate card or whatever it is. Um, it's quite important for me to not take campaigns or work with clients that I feel like don't align with me. Sure. So if you're not going to align this with the style of content that I'm doing, um, it's going to be really, really hard. There's even gone to instances where I've had to decline um, the whole campaign because no, they didn't want to meet me halfway. Um, but I think it really is one of those you have to pull the idea apart to build it up again. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing now that we're fighting as creators is that, right? Is those brands or clients saying they want things their, their way, um, but then they got you for you. So then how does that work? You know what I'm for saying? For sure, yeah. Um, so I think now I'm more in a season where I'm able to speak up um, but I'm also in a season where clients do understand me. They understand um, who my audience is. Um, and if that does not align, be okay to just let go of it. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, you've done some collaborations with a few brands, quite a yeah. lot of brands, in fact. I mean, mm-hmm. some of my brands that I actually want to be part of. Yeah. Um, how do you navigate collaboration in general? Um, for me, it just needs to like really feed into the content I do. Um, luckily for me, I do travel and lifestyle. And so for me, I will say this all the time. You cannot travel without a lot of things. So the first thing you need is underwear. And then you need an outfit. <laughs> and then you need a bag. <laughs> and then you might need some sunscreen. Um, so for me, it's very important to collaborate with brands that really feed into travel. Um, but also brands that I believe in, right? So brands that I've loved from um, a very young age. And an example of that is like Wumpy. Um, growing up, we would drive down to KwaZulu Natal to see my grandmother. And I promise you, 10 times out of 10, my dad would stop. 
at the Wimpy and Newcastle. Sure. We would stop there all the time. And so for me, it's that nostalgia, it's the realness of it, and knowing that I'm working with them is even better. So there needs to be a story that attaches themselves to that. But secondly to that, um, ethics is quite important for me right now. Sure. So there are certain brands that I will not work with. There are certain petrol brands I will not work with. There are certain clothing brands I will not work with. As you said, sustainability is quite big for me. Um, being responsible um, is quite important for me from a client's pers- perspective. Um, so for me, like I need to wear up those options. Like, is it a company and a brand that I feel like I can connect with and tell a story? Um, and lastly, how is their ethics? What are they doing? How is their PR? As much as they love watching ours, what about theirs? So you're telling me before you collaborate a brand, you'd yeah. go through some of those things just to make sure like it's working out for you, right? Yeah, because I mean, I just got offered a, a thing now and um, well, a few months back, um, I won't m- m- mention the brand, um, but it's a brand that is just, yeah, there's a lot of bad PR happening around it. So for me to say yes to that would not make sense, especially for what I stand for. Um, so I would decline that. Interesting. Yeah. How has your brand evolved over time, right? And what factors contributed to your growth? Sure, it has actually grown like leaps and bounds. I think more than anything, I found my voice. Um, I think in the beginning, we I was very like not sure about what do I stand for? What do I not stand for? We say yes to all the brands because we just need money for petrol uh, or a taxi, you know? Yeah, yeah. So in the beginning, there's that rawness of, of that hunger. Um, not saying we don't have it right now, but I think I'm a little bit more refined. I'm a little bit more um, aware of the vision that I have. Um, I know the next steps um, to the story of Toby. Um, and that's exciting to see. Um, but also, like, I'm not really overly hyped um, by keeping up with trends. I think that's a great thing. Trends are great, trending, and all of that is great. But I'm at a point where I don't need that to make an impact. Um, I don't need a reel to hit a million um, for me to be excited. Sure. Um, I'm creating work that resonates with me, that, that I like. Um, and that I feel my clients also like and my audience loves. Um, So that's how I think I've evolved. Um, Apart from that, the quality, of course, you know, um, quality has has upped a bit more. The camera's gone up now. Yeah, (laughs) now you got people shooting for you. Uh, Um, But also that, it's it's also using the storytelling elements of it, being able to really bring in a different element in in the content that I create. Um, But also that, taking away from just having the big cameras is being able to just use what we have on hand, right? And being sure. smart with the smartphones that we have. Um, and I've seen that, you know, because when I look at the UK girlies, um, a lot of them use their phones. Um, and then in South Africa, we all have these adverts, you know? Yeah. So like, how do we balance that out? It's something I'm, I'm kind of toying with at the moment, um, just to bring a little bit more relatability to the, the content that I create. Introducing Color Space, a stock photo platform dedicated to showcasing images of black people. Whether you're a professional photographer or you just know your way around a smartphone, sign up, submit your photos, and start earning through your creativity. Visit www.colorspace.co.za. So, talking collaboration and brands, yeah. Which brands? and influences would you like to collaborate with in the future oh actually i'm actually in that thought process now um what i'm trying to do now is not necessarily care much about the brand um but i want to actually co-create my own uh campaigns you know with other amazing travel creators sure um i think all my faves um do i have to name it i mean you don't have to name them but it'll be and great I've collaborated to with so many it. amazing ones already i mean i've For collaborated sure. with uh black tony stark which is one of my faves and he's a great um storyteller too um i've collaborated with harmonics i would love to collaborate with you we haven't and collaborated shoot, just yet yes. definitely need to so for me it's really cre- creating content with the other creatives um i definitely want to work with kyron 
Um, I definitely want to work with cabin seekers. I definitely want to work with my sister, who I work with all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, there's other amazing um, creators. You know, there's the Kofaris, there's Jenny, there's Nels, there's the Boko Pin Pin, who I've worked with on um, previous um, campaigns. But I want to put all of us together to create something bigger than all of us, right? Like, really create the biggest travel uh, campaign. And maybe we travel through Africa together and actually create our own reality TV show. Um, for me, it would be more that type of collaboration that I'm interested in doing now. Um, it's really using one another's skills and actually um, then getting the brands on board after we've created the platform and the whole campaign. So I'm quite excited to start doing things like that. Good luck. I mean, you are manifesting it. <laughs> manifesting it, so it's definitely out there. Yes. I really, really love that. I hope it does happen. Yeah. I'm definitely here for the collaboration yeah. too. That's such a brilliant idea. Uh, we're copywriting it right now. Uh, we're copying it right, right now. No, but nobody's <laughs> listening. I see the cameraman there. It's like, we know. Yeah, we have to collaborate. Okay? Yes, yes. We're going to collaborate. And we're going to collaborate with Shadrach too Absolutely. at 360 Studios. So, yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah, shout out to that. I want to ask you, right? What's the most valuable lesson you've learned as a travelpreneur and lifestyle content creator? Is to start diversifying. Um, I think the biggest thing is we get so stuck in our ways. And then, as I said, you see yourself as a content creator and that's it. I think we need to start seeing ourselves as many agencies and running as many agencies. We need to offer better services to our clients. Um, so instead of you just taking that 50K for a campaign, why not show them your other services um, and diversify what you're offering to your clients? Sure. Um, and that's sort of where I'm now, whether we're creating our own luggage bags or creating our own um, eventing spaces or creating our own um, whatever it is, we need to start creating our own. We need to start seeing um content bigger than our brands you know um because i feel like we're at a point like we are we are just waiting for the next campaign sure yeah you know? and we shouldn't be living life like that we should be actually like thinking bigger you know why are we not writing books why are we not um creating our own series why are we not doing all these other things um versus waiting for the brand to endorse it um so that is what i think i've learned um, and it's what I think is going to carry me for the next 10, 20 years um, in the tourism and travel industry. What is your inspiration behind it? Like just wanting to do different things, do it differently to everybody else. Like <laughs> we could all just wait for the next campaign, but you want to do a TV show, you want to write a book, you want to travel around the whole out of Africa with other people. What's what's the inspiration behind it? Money. I'm talking <laughs> <laughs> The inspiration is really myself. Like I inspire myself daily. Um, I'm in competition with myself every day to do a little bit better every day. Sure. Um, but apart from that, really, it's my family. Um, I come from a family of um, doers and thinkers and creatives in their own rights. Um, and it's wanting to see my legacy become a legacy um, and come into fruition. So yeah, definitely mostly me, like inside, it's God, it's me, it's my ancestors. Um, it's that little voice in my head at night when I can't sleep and there's an idea um, that I have to just do it. I know it's tough, but I also get days where I'm just like, Toby, you have to do it. Do not let that evil voice win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you Would you say you're self-motivated or do you need some a little bit of a kick sometimes, whether it's music, whatever it may be? I'm quite self-motivated actually, um, which is such a blessing. Yeah. Um, I am all about consistency. I'm all about discipline. Um, and I want to do something, I do it. Um, so yeah, I think I, I, I do it for myself. But apart from that, I think, you know, getting a little energy from good music. I love good jazz. Um, I love uh, traveling and trying new restaurants out. Um, yeah, so, but definitely me. Like, yes, I can wake up and be like, I'm doing this and I just do it. Okay. Yeah. That's actually dope. I mean, yeah. <laughs> A lot of people sometimes may not be self-motivated right? trying True. to get into the industry, looking at Toby and be like, how do I do this thing, right? Yeah. I need to wait for brands. No. And ne ne not necessarily, right? Mm. What is your answer to that? I mean, you, you did say it now, now, but yeah. please uh, expand a little bit. I, th I think the biggest thing, right? And I've got practical examples that have happened with me, like along my journey. Um, I will sit one day, I remember I worked on something called the Black Man series on my YouTube channel with my sister. 
And it was something that was taken from a conversation that I saw on television. Um, I the think Black it Man was, series. Yeah, so, okay. I created that with my sister. Okay. Um, so we sat one day and I said, dude, why are we always focused on women and this and this? When the actual issue is also men. Like, why are we not talking to men? Um, and we wrote this up. We did the whole synopsis. Like, literally had the whole plan. Got our friends involved to shoot this for us and edit it for us for like, zero rands <laughs> i Good edited friends. the whole thing yeah um and then we got a pesky involved and um, pesky gave us money and at that time i don't even think i had twenty thousand followers my sister didn't even have maybe ten thousand followers but we weren't selling our followers we were selling quality we were selling storytelling we were selling how the brand fits in to that idea and i think a lot of the time we're so fixated on the numbers yeah. instead of selling us Sure. And the core of what you can bring. The return on investment is not always the monetary um, side of it. There are so many other things. It might be your insight. It might be research base, you know. So it's being able to really um, know that you guys, you can get the brand on board. You can send a proposal. It's all in how you package it and how you package yourself. Um, and as I said, I was getting paid way more than people who at the time had 80,000 followers sure. um, because I didn't base myself on a following um, shop. I sure. based myself on so many other things that I knew I could do better than someone else. I really love that, man. Um, that's a lot of advice that we'll have yeah. to, um, you know, when starting out in the industry, there can be so many things that like are, are going left and right, mm. right? Um, how do you measure success and the impact that, the success might have for you i don't even know if i'm like oh i mean i know i'm successful but i'm not sure if i've reached any type of pinnacle yet you know and and for me my measure of success is around you randomly at an event and you thought someone didn't know you and they're talking about you and it's someone really really like high up there right um my measure of success is someone in my dms and telling me that they're at this place that i went to last week or yeah. they've saved that post or they've done something that i um did you sure, know that's yeah. my measure of success you know it's in the small little nuances and 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 things in life when you have to be like damn i'm actually toby yeah toby you know you're at an event or you summon and someone is like you toby like and i'm like damn you know me um that is kind of cool that is really kind of cool and it's also reaffirming to the fact that i'm clearly doing something right whatever it is maybe i don't know yeah. or i do but i'm doing something right and that's all that matters as long as you keep doing things the way you want to and impacting at least one person whether they're known whether they're a follower whether it's someone you just meet on the street you're doing something right so yeah that's how i measure my success that's interesting. Do you yeah. suffer from imposter syndrome? And I'm asking this because, yeah. you know, you're saying sometimes you get to an event and somebody be like, yeah, hey, you do like, this. And you be like, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Do you, do you think you suffer from I imposter do. Syndrome? I don't think. <laughs> you do? <laughs> I really do. Yeah, I do. It's actually quite crazy. I really do. Like, there are times I'm like, why am I here? You know? Um, why was I invited? Why did I get this? And why didn't someone else? But as I said, you got to come back to your core. For sure. You have to remember that this is your race. You need to also understand that I've put in work for the last five years. I, I am not my figures over, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, that's going to start showing. And it has to show in, in some way or another. Um, and I get to a point where I'm just like, okay, Toby, why not you? When I start having the negative talk, I say, why not you? Why not you? Yeah. yeah. That's powerful, man. Yeah. There's a notion of starving artists. Like, you know, you got to do it for the art, for the creativity, right? What's your take on making the bag and still being creative and staying creative? I don't, you know, it sounds yeah. like a weird question, but I hope yeah. you get me. I hear you. You know what? The starving has to happen, though. Like, okay. not forever. You have to starve, guys. I don't know how to explain it. Is there something in the starving that. There's something in the starving. There's something in the starving that is making us resilient things nah? you need to starve and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this for the new age youngins yes who don't want to starve of course they've got you the latest yeah. 14 pro exactly. they've got a camera right? they've got everything and i'm saying this because i've starved I've, I've gone through this like guys it's been bad i was saying today in an interview um you have to go to events in the beginning right 
So you don't know anyone, but you have to go and know the PR artists and whatnot. You have to put yourself out there. Yeah. Oh, normally, look, we are like, and take your call. Sure. Like, you're just like, oh, this campaign is paying me 4,000 Rand. 4,000 Rand for taxis in, in a month, it's, it's like 5,000. You're trying to scramble that. You're trying to get to the event. The event finishes at nine. Who's taking you home? Yeah. Who's taxi taking you home? Yeah. You're scrambling to get home. You know, it's, it's those small things. You shoot in content. You can't even do your nails, mm. but you have to shoot the content. Yeah, you know? the content it, is needed. It's needed. Yeah, and the starving for me just builds resilience, True. and it also just creates a a a a. So you feel grounded more when you start reaching pinnacles. You for know? sure. Um, but yes, starve, but not for too long. <laughs> not for too long. <laughs> I agree long. with that too. Yeah, and 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 that's what I'm saying. You need to get to a point. The starving is just in that beginning stage where you're trying to find your feet. Yeah. You're trying to figure out who you are. You're trying to figure out how much you're worth. Um, but once you've gotten to a place of you've starved and you felt it, I feel like the sky is the only limit. For sure. You know, I'm now at a point where I'm like, I won't charge you that much because I'm Toby. Yeah. And you've gone through and the starving. And I've gone through the starving and I've been sure. here for five years. I deserve it. Sure. And that's why I'm okay with, with, with my rate card at the moment. Yeah, it might seem high to you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the not work, to me. The yeah, work for yeah. me speaks for itself. For you know, sure. and you can't buy um, time. You yeah. can't buy time back. You can't buy um, experience. Oh yeah, that is stuff that stays with you. You for know, sure, forever. Yeah. Forever. Um, and I do not believe in being a starving creative. I love that. <laughs> I really do love that. There is no such thing as a, you shouldn't be a starving no. artist. But at some point, like, you know what? The starving does help because yeah. personally, I believe it gives you that. I, do I really want to do this exactly. thing? Exactly. Like when you when you have to think, yo, this four thousand rand. Do I rather go drinking or not, or go somewhere else mm-hmm. and just, or do I actually take that Uber, uh, go to that event, not knowing exactly. anybody, with anxiety, whatever it is? Do I really want to do this thing instead of just having everything as is? It just mm-hmm. feels uh, so normal. No, you must also be getting that four thousand. For sure. Like, sorry, babes. Like this is what it is in the beginning, right? And I think because I've worked from sixteen. I get it. I did an internship once and you have to be at the office every day, yeah. three times a week. Yeah. They pay you 5K, you know? But you have to be there. And I just think we're at a generation that like, we're not ready for the work work. And I'm not saying don't pay. We want to be paid, but not everything's going to be, you know, roses in the beginning, guys. You actually have to go through it. You have to put the work in. You have to pull through that door and be able to say, I went through that, like, as you said, you know, um, so that you can go on to the other side and actually smell the roses, Yeah, you know, and, and, and enjoy the that. journey a little bit more. For sure. Yeah. Thank you for that. How do you handle negative feedback? Yo, it's a tough one, eh? It's such a tough one. But I just go back and do the work properly. Like, I don't know, you just do it. I think um, there's, there's, there's not a lot of time for you to sit and wallow in that you use the negativity to to, to push you higher. Um, and that's how I deal with that at this moment. If there's some negative comments or whatever it is, I use it, I turn it around and it becomes like a huge positive. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Strength to you for that. I mean, look, I know that negative feedback sometimes takes me back a little bit because yeah. it makes me doubt my work. It makes me think, do I actually, can I even do this yeah. thing? You know what I mean? Um, but feedback is so important and, mm-hmm. I, and and I see you have a community around you of whether it's you know sisters, brothers that can give you the, the, the feedback. So that's super amazing. And having watched your journey growing, I mean, you must be getting some feedback to some degree, right? That's growing you. So that's super amazing. I want to segue into your opinion on the travel industry in South Africa. And also tell me what sustainable tra- tourism is rather. Awesome. So let me start with just sustainable tourism, um, what that means to me and what that actually is. So for me, it really is about being smarter um, about how we travel, um, whether it's about wastage, looking after the um, environment, um, not doing certain activities that put um, animals in danger or take them out of their natural habitat. Um, so that's big for me, whether it's traveling and having your own water bottle so that you're not using plastic, whether it's not having to pack um, 2,000 outfits and you'd rather have to pack 10 um, because that helps um, with the carrying of your bags or whatever. And also just being able to be responsible in the way you travel in specific countries. So if you're going to a predominantly Muslim country or an Islam country, be able to then know what their customs are and actually 
be a part of that, you know? Sure. And I think that's stuff that people don't really think about, whether it's the dress code, how you dress, how you cover up, um, you know, the customs in those particular countries. That's huge for me. Um, um, and that's why there's certain activities I do not do um, and I will never do, whether that's um, sitting on an elephant and doing those um, experiences. For me, it's not sustainable tourism, um, especially if it's not a sanctuary that is actually rehabilitating um, the animals. So it's really just doing your research in terms of how you travel and how we can actually um, look um, after our land a little bit more. Um, for me, that's huge. But coming back to the industry, <laughs> um, is this more like in the travel contemplation game or just as a whole? Um, I want to say the travel industry, but let's go to content, right? So yeah, we've covered content. a better travel. Let's go to the content industry. industry. What, what's your opinion on that? Yo, I'm loving it, guys. Yo, when we started, like, there wasn't a lot of us. Like, yeah. I, I promise you, there was, like, five five people I knew. I knew Mike and Carla. Um, they were doing amazing work. Are these um, South Africans? South Africans. Okay. Um, and they were doing amazing work. Fari had started just around the time that we had started to create our travel content. Um, Nero was doing his stuff, too, and winning competitions. There really wasn't a lot of people on the ground yeah. um, creating this type of content. We had Abolu Lama, who was showing us gems um, at the time, but she wasn't necessarily a travel content creator, sure, yeah. you know? And so now you're seeing the drone shots, man. <laughs> the drone shots are shouting, you yeah, know? straight up. Yeah, yes, you see, seeing, like, people with the equipment. Yeah. There's all these couples that are doing all these amazing um, travel content, and I'm like I'm for it. I'm also for the diversity. You know, you now have people who are like Poppy Sibia, who are um, traveling from SA to to Ghana and taking us on her journey. Um, you now have the Dinis who are focused more on um, you know walks and doing hikes, that type of vibe. You have so many different types of content creators. We have more males coming into the space, you know. Sure. Shout out to Jovenci, you know, who's coming through, changing it up. Abu Tebujo, who are really focused on the Western Cape. So it's great to see how people have found their little niches um, in travel. But also at the same breath, um, to those wanting to enter it, you do not need the drones. You do not need the latest in any type of technology. Tell your story the way you want to tell your story. Um, I hardly use, actually, even a drone guys like i think um they're great but i hardly even use that type of um equipment for for, sure. for my travel content yeah. um, but shout out to those who can and shout out to those who do it i think um we're at a place where we can diversify this industry so much um and there's such a positive outlook in terms of how everyone's doing their content so differently yeah, yeah. um i just wish we would come together a little bit more and, and really just collaborate a little more yeah really interesting opinion on the travel industry in south africa or the content creation uh, industry in South yeah. Africa. Um, I really, really love that, that you like, you finding, you have a community. In fact, you're not even finding community, you have a community. And community is one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. Personally, as a creator, I definitely um, agree with that one. I want to ask as a traveler, where can I go without a visa? Quite a few, like the whole of SADC. So let's start okay. in Africa. Okay. <laughs> You can go to Kenya, are you, my favorite country. Are world. you an advocate of traveling in Africa? Yes, I, I really am, guys. I really am. So as I said, it's so much easier for us. Yes, the routes suck. Um, and that's why a lot of people will either drive versus flying because of the route issue. Especially if you're trying to go to like West Africa, it's really is a bit of a headache. But I think start close. Yeah. As I said, you know, you're going to Botswana, go. You can just go um, as a South African. So let's go there, Zimbabwe. You can go to Zim. Uh, you can go to Kenya. And those are countries that are ready for us um, to be there. And I think a lot of the time we're so fixated on uh, Terminal A and um, not African Terminal A, yeah. the, the European Terminal A, yeah. <laughs> um, that we forget that we live in such a beautiful continent that has an array um, of different climates, seasons, um, vegetation, animals, people, food. Um, and we don't necessarily really know that and get to experience it that. So people really should start traveling Africa a little bit more and, and really just seeing how beautiful it is. Yeah. I really love that. And you travel Africa quite a lot. I do. Um, I have. 
you have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. in fact, it's really amazing. I mean, that's the reason I'm asking also is for anybody else that might want to know. You know, I know Google is there, yes. but sometimes it's great to hear it from Toby. Like, no, you can go to the country. Yeah. I advocate for the country. Yeah. You can actually go there, and it's really amazing. And when you talked about sustainable tourism, something really like clicked because okay. you, you mentioned so many amazing things like mm. when you go to a country uh, dress code how you talk and um, but we i don't know i'm not seeing much of that in general what lessons or mistakes um to can one avoid when going to a, to different countries and just trying to be in touch a little bit with what's happening in a country yeah i think just do your research i think the biggest thing is research 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 yeah um and not just google luckily for us you guys have us um instagram is literally on your fingertips <laughs> being able to go through toby's highlights or another creator's highlights and actually take a little bit from that but apart from that it's really just being able to ask the right questions and and really doing like specific research for example you wouldn't want to go to Kenya right now. Why? There's elections happening. People haven't spoken about that, right? Yeah. There's so many other issues that are happening in these countries um, that we don't really have foresight um, around. But because I integrate myself, I always say there's a there's a difference between a tourist and a traveler. Um, a traveler immerses themselves with the locals and you kind of don't want to be a tourist yeah. when you're traveling. So yeah. that's a mistake. To, like, don't do that. Be a traveler immerse yourself with locals um have a local connect so that when you come back or you want to go back to that specific country you have someone on the ground that is easily reachable and that can tell you these things um and the only way we would find these out is by talking to the locals so immerse yourself number two it's getting money at the airport don't do that like it's the highest rate you'll get so make sure you go to probably a mall um and do that Get yourself an eSIM. You can do that online so that when you're traveling, you don't need to keep taking out your SIM card and you can just activate your SIM card as you arrive. Yeah. Um, apart from that, knowing just the laws of the countries is so important, whether it's about how many milliliters of something you can bring in or what you can bring in, because a lot of people get in trouble for that. So just be able to know what you're traveling with, what are the laws for that country, um, so you don't even find yourself banged up abroad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's some real stuff, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good tips. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you've given me so much insight into the travel space, into your personal yeah. life a little bit. Is there anything that you want to talk about? I mean, I know you mentioned earlier on you have a podcast coming up. Should we be when should we look out for that? Sure, guys, like as I said, I'm a little bit of a procrastinator and I have all these ideas um, that I spoke about, but I really am working on the podcast, the ideas out there. Yeah. Um, and I'm really trying to at least launch it before the end of the year. Um, so look out for that. Apart from that, I'm kind of creating a mini agency uh, very, very soon and co-creating with other creatives. Um, being able to sell our ideas to the brands is where I want to take it yeah. and not wait for them to come for ideas. Um, but apart from that, it's really just to tell someone out there who wants to be a travel creator that like it is super possible. Um, start in your neighborhood, start in your country, start in your um, province, start where you are. Um, and also find your difference. You know, Don't try to be like anyone else. Don't think you're not going to make it because you don't have a drone. Don't think you're not going to make it because you don't have the latest equipment. Your phone is the equipment. Um, but have a story and, and just tell your story. Um, and you will find yourself possibly being one of the best travel content creators um, in South Africa. Amen. I want to travel now. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going, Cyril? I don't know. I'm not Kenya. Okay, cool. Not Kenya Let's right go now. somewhere else. Let's go somewhere else. So we do Senegal. S Ooh. I've never even thought of Senegal. Yeah, we should do Senegal. Oh, that sounds amazing. I mean, you also do trips, right? Yeah, I, I, I held off on that. That thing is a lot of work. Sure, yeah. Um, but I am sort of co-creating a few other little things. Also working on some workshops for up-and-coming um, content creators wanting to be in the travel space. So from that will come more trips. Love that. And I hope definitely to travel with you one day, to yeah. also collaborate with you one day. I hope your dreams or your passions, the agency that you're talking about. Um, and I hope we can look back again in three years' time mm. and look at the conversation and say, 
you've grown. Yes. Can't yeah. wait to be back in three years. Of course. <laughs> and congratulations to you once again. This is literally me giving you your flowers as I always wow. do. I know that sometimes we're on Instagram, whether somebody, you know, some people can mm. be like touchy if you don't like their photos or their content or interact with their content. But for me, this is my way of showing your flowers to somebody in the industry that I look up to that is doing really amazing work. And I think everybody should be checking out. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Two more things before we leave. Awesome. What do you think it takes to be at the top of what you do? Guts. It takes guts. Sibiti. Sibiti. Liver. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Have a little liver in you. <laughs> <laughs> I really love that. One more thing. Yes. We have a tradition on the podcast um, where you leave a question or a word of encouragement for the next guest. You don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. They don't know who the word of encouragement or the question comes from. Mm. Let's do a question. Okay. Well, what question, question could you possibly have for my guest? And just I mean, to give you a better... Obviously creative. So. Yeah, so most of my guests are yeah. very much creative. It could be anyone. I don't even know who it could be, but they're mostly in the creative field. Awesome. Um, so my question to the next guest is, tell me the story of when you were at your lowest and how you got out. Wow. Amazing question. I'm going to think about that too. Yeah. <laughs> Toby, thank you so much for coming to Bureau Conversations. You. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're definitely coming back to this. And your sister hasn't come back. Hasn't come to the she episode. She needs to come through. She needs to come she to the episode. Right through, yeah. I really love it. Thank Toby, you. once again, thank you so much for coming to Bureau Conversations. And cheers. Cheers to you. <laughs> Introducing Colorspace, a stock photo platform dedicated to showcasing images of Black people. Whether you're a professional photographer or you just know your way around a smartphone, sign up, submit your photos, and start earning through your creativity. Visit www.colorspace.co.za.